I didn't have a visitation or anything. And one night I said to the Lord, why do you have me come in here and nothing is going to happen? And he said, the most powerful thing is already happening. I'm teaching your spirit how to just obey me without your emotions. I don't know if somebody heard what I just said because what that's going to do in a few minutes that's going to help some of you that said I don't I didn't feel like worshiping God you don't know that the greatest miracles that take place are miracles that happen when you worship God and you don't feel like worshiping God when you praise him and you don't have a reason why you should as a matter of fact everything in your life is going crazy but you making a choice to praise him anyhow and man of God the second night that I was in that church ministering I began to worship God and the presence that I saw come down on you was where I was that night and I began to worship Jesus in such a way that when I reached up I was about to touch the side of his face and I fell backwards like I almost collapsed. And I stopped worshiping God because I felt the people saying, come on and preach. And I shut the worship down. And I started singing a song to him that he gave me. And it's really simple. I said, so come down in this place so come down and show us your grace so come down because we want to see your face and we will be changed to sing that song to him and I almost passed out the next night that same night I went and laid back down on the altar and about 5 45 that morning there was a rumbling that came through that building that shook the entire building I'm talking about like an earthquake an earthquake trembling Lord it was like an earthquake I, I have to do this because this is my mission now it was like an earthquake shook that building four people were in that building bring it down some more four people was in that building two of the elders from their church were sitting in the back I got up and I went to them and I said is there a train station near your church? And they said, no. I said, is there an airport near your church? And they said, no. The elder said, Prophetess Bynum, did you feel that? You could still feel the building trembling. The shaking was so hard. He said, Prophetess Bynum, when the shaking came, my phone was on the seat and I picked up the phone and flashed, put it back down. He said, I don't even know why I did that. What, I, what you're looking at right now on that screen is at 545 in the morning and that's a stained glass window. There is no sunshine even out. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute before you clap. That's one of my workers laying on the front seat and I was on the pulpit and it shook so hard till it shook that building. I'm gonna say it again. That's a stained glass window at 5.45 in the morning. There is no sunshine.
at 5.45 in the morning. But he said, Dr. Bynum, I think I caught an angelic being. And I said, let me see. I said, enlarge it. Jesus said to me, Juanita, this is me. I ran and threw myself on the pulpit and I said, no, Lord. He said, it's me. Well, he said, get your Bible. When I opened my Bible up, it fell open by itself to revelation that said, and when God entered the tabernacle, there was trembling and a loud noise and rumbling. When he said that to me, people of God, he said, now go to your, go to your laptop and look up the shroud of Jesus. I said, it is me. He told me that night, and let this be a lesson to you, man of God. He told me that night, he said, had you kept worshiping me, I would have revealed my whole body. He said, you asked me to show you my face. And he said, I would have revealed my entire body. I said, okay, God. So I get up the next night to tell the people what happened. That's the Jesus that I met. That's the one that since that visitation, I've seen him raise the dead. That's the one that I will never doubt again. That's the one that is in this building right now. No, you don't have you don't have you don't have to praise God if you don't want to but I said that's the one that's in this building right now I know when he is present and I'm here to tell you that the real Jesus is in this building and he's getting ready to prove himself to be mighty watch this so I I I I and I don't usually do this the first night of a meeting but Jesus said, I'm in this building. And in a few minutes, he's getting ready to sweep through here. My God. I'm going to show you the presence that's in this building. I said to him, he said, show that to my people. I get up the next night and I showed it to the people. And all of a sudden, heaven opened up before my eyes and I saw millions of angels coming down from heaven and I told the people of God I said shout because the angels of the Lord just came down and they are doing a mighty work and I said begin to praise God because every yoke in the building is being destroyed I said begin to praise God because every yoke in the building is being destroyed the yoke of a over your family I'm not oh I don't know who I'm talking to right now but if you in this building and you got loved ones that are under the power of addiction it is being broken right now wait wait where's that where's where's the microphone case where's Nettie Where's the microphone case? I need you to run and get it. What you are looking at on this screen is a yoke that is broken, but this picture was taken through forensic science and it came back as a negative that there is no image like that in, on the face of the earth. Out of billions of searches, there, in other words, nobody put this here in graphics. You're looking at it right now. It said zero results. After they took it through forensic science, that means they took the picture apart. And when they took the picture apart, there was no image in this picture on the face of the earth, which means no graphic artist could have put it there. Are you hearing what God is saying? 
Are you hearing what he's saying? When God say, I am breaking a yoke, I am destroying a yoke, you get to praise God regardless of whether or not you feel it or not. Who am I? Wait, hold the music. Hold the music. Because I need to hear somebody praise God. We're not talking about, we're not talking about musical emotions. We're talking about you learning how to trust God for what he is telling you. You see that white feather? That's what I thought was a feather. Do you see the long arm? That's the angel's face right there. That's his arm. That's his face. Look at the smoke that I thought was smoke over my hand and enlarge that picture. On the video, I have nothing in my hand. I don't have a towel in my hand. I don't have anything in my hand. But that night, the Holy Ghost put a sword in my hand. No, you don't. You. I walked in here with a sword in my hand. Is there anybody that want to be delivered? I said, I walked in here. I said, I walked in here with a sword in my hand. Is there anybody that want to be delivered? I didn't put that in my hand. That came out on the picture. But the smoke that I thought was over my hand, when you take a picture through forensic science, what they do then, they send you back a negative. Let me show you the negative. It wasn't smoke, people of God. It was an angel that was standing in front of me. The same angel that's in front of me tonight, he follows me everywhere I go. No, you don't want to hear me. Because, because my angels don't fight facing that way. They're fighting the demons that's on the wall that was pinned to the wall with the blood of Jesus. If you really look carefully, you will see that there are demons on the wall that could not come down and attack me because my angel was standing guard while you were getting delivered. And the same thing is happening tonight. And what I thought was a feather, what I thought was a feather, that was the angel's entire stretch of his body. That's the negative. That's the negative of the picture. I said, okay, God, watch this, people of God. I said, okay, God. I said, what are you trying to say to me here? I said, what is it that you're really trying to say to me? He said, I'm trying to tell you that I got you on a mission right now. And when you show up in a building, when you show up in a building, every demonic force, I called my spiritual daughter and I said to her, pray for me. I said, because I feel very sick. When I was in the back, the Lord said, this is not natural. He said, the enemies of darkness don't want you to walk in that building. He said, because when you do, he said, I'm getting ready to break up the fallow ground. When you do, people are going to get delivered. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. When I go to places, God doesn't usually let me take off my shoes unless he is going to possess the ground. Tonight, I forgot my shoes. And God said, put on your socks because I'm taking over these crowds. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You don't know what's happening in this building right now. That's somebody that believe it right there. Because some of y'all praise is in A flat. Some of y'all praise is in C sharp. But my praise is in the fact that God is speaking a word over my life. I said, okay, God. No, he gave me to show you something. He gave me to show you something. 
somebody was in the service, a lady was in the service and pulled out her camera phone and took a picture and all of that came up in her camera phone in the shot that she took because the angels of the Lord were there. They were there. Why is God doing this? Because something supernatural. Because something supernatural is happening in this building right now as we speak. Go to the Word Network and show them the angel is still there. The Lord told me, he said, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you that there are demons that follow you, that stand behind you, but cannot touch you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Somebody took another picture. Look at the demon on the wall. Look at the demon on the wall. Look at the one. That's not a picture of, a, of something that they drew. That is an actual demon on the wall with his hands up. But my angel is standing right in front of me. He follows me everywhere I go. He is my divine protection. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. And while he is standing there guarding me while I prophesy in this place, uh, the ministering angels of God is cutting you free from every bondage. My God, I wish I had somebody to believe what I'm telling you. I said they are cutting you free right now. Because we are used to coming into the house of God and praising God as if it's a myth. We worship God as if, well, they said praise him. And I'm going to praise him, but are we really, watch this, are we really praising God or I don't feel like praising God? No, he's very present in this building right now. Lord Jesus. I said he's very present. I said he's very present in this building right now. Oh, y'all. Okay, go to Brazil. Go to Brazil. And then the Lord, and then the Lord takes me to, no, go back to the other word network picture. I walk with a real Jesus. I said, I walk with a real Jesus. I walk with a real Jesus. I wear the shrouds of Jesus on the inside of my clothes. I cannot take them everywhere I go. And God told me to bring them to this meeting. I was preaching at the Word Network and somebody took a picture and Jesus showed up on the front of my dress. He took over the bottom of my dress. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. That's not graphics. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. Because see, somebody looking at that right there. But what he told me to tell you is that everybody in here that professed Christ, that's how he looks standing in front of you. And that's why the devil hates you. I'm not hearing y'all. You better give God a praise right now. Because when you magnify God, you cause Jesus to project himself and the devil is angry because he cannot do nothing about it. He can't do nothing about it. He can't do nothing about that. He can't do nothing about the Christ that is in you. He can't do, watch this, he cannot do anything about not only the Christ that is in you, but the prayers as to the reason why that Christ is making himself manifest. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Yeah, I'm, 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 no, 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 I'm not hearing y'all because see, you didn't come to this meeting just to see me. You came to this meeting because there's some things that you got up before God that you need an answer about. And I'm here to tell you right now that tonight the Lord said, I'm answering prayer tonight. He said, if they would only begin to praise me, if they would only begin to magnify me by faith. Watch this. Let me show you something. Go to the video from Brazil. I was saying the same thing to 10,000 people in Brazil. And I was saying to the people, I said, God said, come alive because he's doing something. I said, I'm prophesying. And I said, the Lord told me to run around this building 
and prophesy that you all must come alive and when I speak it as you begin to praise God I said God is going to move supernaturally well what you get me to see now is the reason why in the next 24 hours you don't have time to come back in this building and think about anybody to your right to your left to your front and your back I'm not here to say nothing you don't have time to let nobody distract you because the kind of praise that's going to break out in this place it is not a church praise it is a supernatural praise that God himself is about to drop on us my God I wish I had somebody that believed that I said it's a supernatural power that God is about to drop on us Watch what happened to a lady that believed that. Play the video. Watch what happened to a woman that believed it. She hits the floor, she's gonna disappear in the glory. the prophetic word that I have the prophetic word that I have he's got to build your faith so in the same meeting I'm preaching and the presence of the Lord said to me he's with me God I was standing and walking across the stage and all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord came up behind me and I felt him arrest me and take me up. I went into a realm in heaven. I'm, I can't, you're going to be able to see it. I went into a realm in heaven and then it came up over my shoulder. I was not there. My eyes were already locked in a divine place. Before I knew it, the Lord slayed me out on the floor without anybody catching me. I went out under the power of God in front of everybody in that stage. I got up, when I got up off the floor, the Lord said to me, you just did battle with a mighty, mighty giant. He said, you just slayed a giant. When I woke up out of the spirit, he said, run off of the platform and go to the bathroom. I ran off of the platform and everybody ran behind me. Now 10,000 people is in the auditorium. I ran out of the out of the auditorium into the bathroom. I shouted to the people and said, get away from the door. This is spiritual. I said, back all the way up against the door. I said, get away from the door. And as soon as I felt them moving back, Bishop, I began to regurgitate. It began to come out of all ends and I collapsed on the floor. When I got done, God said, get up. Take everything off and put it in a bag and tie it up. He said, you just did battle with a demon spirit from the pit of hell. He said, you just destroyed a stronghold over this country. I'm not giving y'all. I didn't come to bless nobody. I came to destroy a stronghold that sits over Louisiana. I I'm not here nobody talk to me. I'm not here nobody talk to me. I came so that we can be free for once and for all. I'm not giving y'all.
I didn't come for church. The demonic forces knew I was coming. I'm getting ready to show you something. I said that the demonic forces knew I was coming. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I said the gates of hell that sit over this Obashaka, that sits over this state knew that I was coming. Wait a minute, wait a minute. From the restroom with all new clothes on. I began to worship God and it felt like my hand went out of socket. And it was shaking so fast that the camera people noticed it. And they put the camera on my hand. My hand Bishop felt numb, like it had no feeling in it. But I can't even, I can't even pretend to try to shake like it was shaking that night. It must have intrigued the cameraman because he put, he put the camera on my hand and the photographer who was standing in the back of the auditorium with a long lens on shot several photographs of my hand. And after a while when he we got back to church the next night. They said when I left, he ran to the pastor screaming, saying, look at what came out. And this is why the devil hate for you to wave your hands. I ain't saying that nobody. I, I said, everybody that's got the Holy Ghost, this is why the devil don't want you to praise him in your house. This is why the devil don't want you to praise him tonight. This is why he don't want you to lift up your hands because your hands is setting on fire. Every work of the devil, your hands up. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You better give God a shout. The devil is afraid of us waving our hands. what I'm getting ready to show you. And the Lord said so that you would believe. When I went out on the power, Bishop, and I set up on the floor, when my hand went in the socket, it shook me down to the floor. And when it shook me down to the floor, I began to shout to the people and I said, everybody in the auditorium get down and begin to worship God. And the people begin to get down. And I, some people were still standing, I said, I shouted and said, you don't know what I'm seeing. I said, if you don't get down, what I am looking at, God is going to permit your spirit to surrender to that demon. I said get down because you don't know what I see. And a lot of times when you talk in man of God, people be thinking you just be saying stuff when you be saying the presence of the Lord is here. Oh, I see demonic spirits. Oh, I see the work of the enemy. But you know what? God, oh, showed up, show you. God helped me to realize something. When I was in Brazil, I said, get down because I know what I saw. I could not explain it to anybody. I know what I saw, Apostle Carrier. I could not tell nobody. I was trying. It, it, it was Bishop, I was in a fright. I was in a fright for the people because I saw what I saw. My nana was at home watching me on television and she said, God told her to take a picture because the glory of the Lord was on me so in such a way. So when she sent me the picture, I said, Nana, I don't see no, I, I don't, she said, it was a bright light over you. I said, I don't see no bright light. Enlarge it. 
enlarge it. Move it over and enlarge it. That's a demon laying on the floor right there. That's not a man. That's not a person. That's not a person, people. That's not a person. You just saw the picture before where there was nobody laying behind me. That was a demon that was trying to come up behind me. That the spirit of the Lord slayed out. Now look at the demon that's staring me in my face. That's the demon right there that you sleeping with. That's the demon right there that you let mess with your life. That's the demon right there. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. When we praying with our salvation, I'm not hearing you. This demon right here, he just dressed up real good. But that's a demon from hell that wants to believe us. Who am I talking to? You still want to play church? People still want to play like they... Play like the devil ain't real. And may I remind you of something? That's not a door. That was a gold curtain. But the devil created a door. Enlarge it right now. Lucifer is looking through the door. Do you see it? Do you see him? Do you see him? He is looking at the he is looking at the demon that is slain. That's a door that the devil created. And I asked the Lord, I said, what are you trying to say to me? He said, tell the people, I said, shut every door. He said, tell the people that every crack that you leave open in your life for the enemy, that's what he does. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Somebody better tell God yes right now because I feel a breaking in this place. I feel a breaking in this place. I said, somebody better tell him yes right now. You gotta shut every door. You gotta tell God yes for real. You gotta come all the way for real. Who am I talking to? You gotta give him a real praise tonight. You gotta get a breakthrough tonight. Who's on the Lord's side? Choose you this day whom you will serve. No man can serve two masters. Anybody wanna be saved? Run down here right now. Anybody want Jesus come right now? Right now. Right now, hurry up! Hurry up! Turn the music up! We are driving out demons right now! God said reach for him right now! He said open up your mouth and begin to say, save me Jesus! Save me, Jesus! Save me, Jesus! Save me, Jesus! Somebody shout right now! Come on! Come on! You gotta do it tonight! This is an emergency! This is an emergency! Come on, open up your mouth. You got to get a breakthrough today. You got to get a breakthrough tonight. Tonight your life depends upon it. Who am I talking to? This may be your last chance. My God, I just felt that. My God, I just felt that. I said, this may be your last chance. 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 Somebody reach for it. Somebody reach for him. Reach for him, or you will be left in the hands of that demon. I said, reach for him. Reach for God. Open your mouth and start shouting. Open your mouth and start shouting.
said, Pray! He said, Pray! Somebody shout! Somebody reach for it! God is doing something in here! He's doing something in here! He's doing something in here! He's doing something in here! Hold on a more shine! what's happening. I don't think you know what's happening. There's enough people in this building right now. We are driving the stronghold out of Louisiana right now. I don't think you know what's happening. I don't think you know what's happening. I don't think you know that your family's deliverance depends upon your praise tonight. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night that the Lord has spoken it. That the praise in this building is driving us. The witchcraft spirit that's over the saints of God. They're being delivered. They're being set free. Somebody shout. Please put the music 
music in these speakers. Please don't let me ask you again. Put the music in these speakers on the stage, right here. Put it in these speakers right now and turn it up. Thank you. Turn it up.
see what I can see up here. People weeping before God. People weeping before God. People weeping before God. People that were living half in and half out. And tonight they made a real decision. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. I cannot entertain you. I cannot hype you. I got to help you. He said, I allowed you to have these experiences so that you can go and shake the body of Christ to let them know that there's a real God, but there's a real devil that hates you too. Who am I talking to right now? Somebody give God a praise right now. Somebody give him a praise for rescuing you. Give him a praise for saving you. Give him a praise for bringing you here tonight. Give him a praise for touching your heart, for bringing you to the altar. Give him a praise tonight. Muslim. He's not even saved. He said, I don't play with these. I don't play with these shrouds. He said, I can only print them when I ask Allah, can I, can I touch them? I don't play with them. I don't play with God. He said, I allowed you to have that experience. Even when I was in Africa, pull that picture up. Go down there and get them. I can't take them everywhere. Because the atmosphere is not conducive. And God said, you got to go in. But when I was getting dressed last night, early this morning, he literally woke me up and said, go upstairs in your prayer room and get them. You're taking them with you. I was in Africa. And I was warned in the spirit for the people in Uganda. And I became overwhelmed in the spirit and I flopped down on the floor. And I said, Jesus, are you here? like tonight and he said yes I am and I took him at his word and began to praise him when I got home that night of Pastor Carrier they brought me pictures and Jesus said to me look for me because I was there and when we enlarge the pictures look at how small the people are on the balcony that's what I want you to see first I'll move it over and there is a shroud of Jesus in the corner there he is. He said, I said I was there. Everywhere I go, there's manifestations. And I said, I don't know why. Dr. Michelle Correll told me 
She said there hasn't been manifestations like this since the early 80s in Benny Hinn's ministry. I can't tell you why. Why other people have pictures. But it's because I totally surrendered. I'm a dead man walking. There's nothing between me and my Jesus. There's nothing. There's nothing I desire more than him. Nothing I look forward to more than seeing his face. I got on my computer, written on a piece of paper. I read how the Bible said when they were stoning Stephen, how he looked up and saw Jesus standing up. And I told Jesus, I want you to stand up for me. I don't just want to make it in. But when I hit the gate, I want you to get up and give me a standing ovation. Because it ain't nothing between me and my Jesus. I'm not giving up. My mission is about as many souls as I can win to God as I can. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not trying to entertain nobody. I'm trying to win souls to God. And when God gave me this, the miracles that begin to happen. The miracles that begin to happen. The dead being raised. One of my friend's mother died. And the doctor said she's already gone. And whenever you all get comfortable. For us to take the machines off. We'll take them off. But your mother is gone. And she called and I said. Get that pressure out. And put it on your mother. I said, and God gonna bring her back. And she was crying so hard. I said, straighten up. I said, I believe in the power of Jesus. I'm not getting nobody to talk to me. She laid that pressure out on her mother. And for two weeks, nothing happened. And the doctor said, you're wasting your time. And one day her, her eyes just opened up. Two months later, she was sitting at the Thanksgiving table. You don't hear me. I know what God can do. I said, you don't hear what I'm saying to you. I got a call on Easter Sunday morning. And one of my friend's daughters, they thought she had a blood disease, but something hit her body, 31 years old, paralyzed from the neck down, dropped on the floor, and couldn't move from the neck down. The doctor said to her mother when they got her to the hospital. They said we're going to put her in a coma. So she can slip away without pain and without fear. And the mother called me and said prophetess. They said ain't no hope. And they getting ready to put her in a coma. So she don't have fear when she going. I said the devil is a lie. They not going to put her nowhere. I said the Holy Ghost says she ain't going to die. She said, are you, she said, wait a minute. Are you giving me the word of the Lord? I said, I'm giving you the word of the Lord. She's not going to die. I said, she's going to live. And not only is she going to walk, she going to run. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I went to that hospital. Apostle Carrier, I went to that hospital. And I had been preaching with the shrouds. Oh, I'm going to send my me the ones I got on to give them to you I got three on he said give them to you I, I wear them on my body each night when I minister whoever God tell me to give them hey hallelujah thank you Jesus I took them off my body that night I went to the hospital I lay all three of them up and down her body and then the Lord said to me do the work of the prophet I climbed up in that bed on top of her body I began to command that body to come back and the other day she went home holding her own balloons three days later she stood up I'm not giving up she walking I'm not giving nobody talk to me she texting now I'm not giving y'all talk because there's power in the name of Jesus.
to another level. You're going to another level. He I start wearing them for Bobby Christina when I said the Holy Ghost said she gonna wake up. People laughed and called me a fool. They said she praying for that girl and she already gone with her mama. But that girl back there on that sound booth is my witness. She was in my house. The night that the Holy Ghost took me up, he said, get them shrouds that you've been wearing for Bobby Christine and put them on. And I was laying on my couch, and the Lord took me up, and all of a sudden, it was like I just said, whoosh, and I just let out a, a, a yell that I can't even explain. When I was in church, I felt her trying to go, and the Holy Ghost took me up, and I started I came out of my preach and started going down, down. God said, you're pulling her back down. That night, the Lord took me up in the spirit. And when I came out of the spirit, I said to her, she's going to wake up. He said to me the other day, he said, I want you to get three more for the finished work. I cannot begin to tell you the miracles. I can't begin to tell you the miracles. Hmm. Hmm. People getting shot in the head and the doctor said they're gone. And the woman took the prayer shroud, went to the hospital, laid it on the boy, and the machine started going off, and the doctor started running. Is there anything too hard for God? Ain't nothing too hard for him. Ain't nothing too hard for him. He gave me in the beginning of the year. I got to wear one for you tomorrow night. Hey, hey, hey. A finished work. You ain't going to never be the same woman. A finished work. You ain't going to never be the same. God's got a call on your life. He got a call on your life. You a prophetess. God got a call. God said he going to do a finished work. A finished work. You ain't going to have to worry no more. He going to break every habit. He going to break every habit. God going to finish the work. Somebody give God a praise for this woman. I gave a word. In the beginning of October, I said, God said, this is the year of the perpetual blessing. That's what he told me. You can't go everywhere. And you can only go where I tell you to go when I tell you to go. He said, because you cannot waste oil. You can't pour it out. Over the wrong people. It costs too much. It cost me my life. I said it cost me my life. Came poured out. He said this is the year of the perpetual blessing. And I prophesied it on Daystar. Because God gave it to me. Thank you God. Thank you, God. 
He said to me, the year of 2015, he said, I don't care where you go. I go to coffee shops and buy people coffee. I go in restaurants and buy people dinner. Because he said, everything that you release in the year 2015 is going to be a perpetual blessing. Which means your children and your children's children is going to benefit from what God going to do for you.